the webinar again today. Um, looks like we've got a huge crowd. We, we thank you for coming out. My name is Doug Mitchell over here at Ogle Tree Financial and um, want to just kind of update you on what we're talking about today. Louis Labash, um, one of our marketers here, is going to be uh, doing a presentation on executive bonus plans. And this uh, really comes as a huge um, uh, interest right now for not only agents like yourselves but business owners. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty out there in the in the marketplace as far as what what's going to happen to uh, to taxes and and tax rates and this is one great way that the business owner can get a deduction for buying his life insurance as well as um, building a, an income tax free uh, retirement plan. So we're going to show you some real good stuff there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you're going to get an email for an invitation to Tuesday's webinar, and we're going to show you, uh, for those of you out there that just haven't grasped the permanent life insurance sale yet, and you're not quite there, uh, we've got a webinar that's going to help you double your commission just selling term insurance. This is a, a great new product that you'll want to, uh, you'll want to see, uh, but those of you that are selling term insurance and you're getting those rated cases, maybe you got a diabetic or a cigar smoker or a, um, somebody's had a stroke, uh, somebody that's impaired getting a table C, or maybe you got a tobacco user getting tobacco rates, we can take those, prop, those term cases and we can apply a standard offer with this carrier that we've got an A-plus carrier and uh, double your commission on on the product. So it's, it's definitely one you're going to want to see. Uh, it's one that we were doing uh, very heavily about four years ago. They pulled it off the shelf and now it's come back in another in another fashion. So uh, we're going to show you how to do that. You guys are going to love it. So Louie, I'm going to go ahead turn this thing over to you and uh, let you let you do the business. Okay Doug, hey. hey good afternoon everybody. This is Louie Labash and today um, one thing that we had up earlier, I just want to re-mention this thing, is that you know, if you do business with Ogletree, we have a, a couple programs going on here where you know, we have company trips that, uh, that, that you can qualify for with the companies, but also at the same time, if you uh, do business with us, we take all the business that you've done, aggregate it, put it across the whole board, and if, uh, if you do $10,000 at each company and it adds up to $50,000 in target premium, you get to qualify for our trip. So basically, uh, uh, you can actually double dip if you uh, you know did the North American trip, which is, I think is uh, thirty two thousand. You qualify for the North American trip. That same thirty two thousand dollars goes towards uh, our trip. And uh, yeah, if you end up doing fifty, you get to go to both. So basically, that's uh, that's uh, this is coming up uh, for this year. That's all you have to do is fifty thousand target premium, and uh, hopefully we're going to see a lot a lot of you there. So going forward, today we're going to talk about. Section 162 of the Internal Revenue Code, and uh, basically what it is, it essentially stipulates that bonus compensation is tax deductible as a business expense. So the idea behind this is that a company can pay an employee a bonus, and it's a deduction for the company. So they get to deduct the bonus just like they then they have to give the employee a 1099 or a W-2, however they pay them the money, but it's a deductible business expense. And we're going to talk about how a, a corporation can use that same money to buy life insurance to keep the employee in the fold, so to speak. So it's a nice thing about it also is it can be selective and discriminatory. They don't have to buy, the, if they do this program, they don't have to do it for everybody. Just like they don't have to give everybody a raise, you know, because they're, you know, unless there's some kind of union involved. But if there's no union, if they're just executives that we're talking about, they can indiscriminately give them raises. They can also indiscriminately buy them life insurance. So we're going to talk about how that works. So the idea is this: uh, you have these highly compensated employees, these executives that work for you, and also these are business owners that are, you know, own, own their own co companies. And they basically, you can throw more money at them, but the money isn't really what they're looking for. They're looking for some, some opportunity for some retirement income, maybe some security. And the employer, when they do this with the employee, they're trying to tie the employee to the company to make sure they don't get up and leave. And that's the whole concept here is it's an executive bonus, but it also has some like golden parachute opportunities built into it. So they basically call them all executive bonus plans, but this is what we're going to use and we're going to talk about today. And then uh, 
Taking that one step further, this executive bonus plan turns into what we call a supplemental employee retirement plan. So it, the way it works, it's a permanent life insurance policy. It has tax-deferred growth and has a, built into this thing because we're going to use the IUL has annual reset. Uh, the employee will own the policy, and if they ever need the money for any reason, they can actually get, get the money out of the policy you know, going forward. So it's not like it's tied up in some qualified plan that they can't touch. So they have access to the capital if they need it. Uh, and at the end of the day, it provides tax-free retirement income uh, because we're going to structure the policy correctly in order to do that. And so the whole idea behind this thing is that one of the big pieces that most people don't talk about and don't understand is that these index universal life products have this thing called uh, arbitrage opportunities. And what that means is that when you take the money out of an index universal life, when you borrow the money out, if you have the right product, uh, when they have variable loan rates and uh, when they borrow the money out, the money still gets to earn whatever the market does. So basically the idea being behind this is that, as an example last year, everybody that had a North American product that uh, had their money tied to the S&P 500 and the product they had last year had a 14% cap. If they borrowed the money out to go buy a boat, to go gambling, to uh, you know, pay the electric bill, they took the money out, they had to pay 4% interest to borrow the money out. But that same money still earned 14% because the cap was 14% and the market was up 14%. So all the money they took out, they actually earned 10% earned on it above what they paid for it. So the idea behind this is that there is no other product in the marketplace that you can take your money out, go buy a boat, go gamble with it, pay the electric bill, buy food, do whatever you want with the money and have it still earn you money. And that's the, one of the real strengths of this thing. We're going to talk about that some more. So, so what's in this for the, for the business owner, basically? Well, first of all, they get to retain their value employees. They help the employees have this business knowledge that's kind of hard to replace. You know, I've been in, this, in the corporate world in the past, and I've gotten promoted to a job where I walk into the office, and the person who, I, who basically had the position before me took 15 minutes to tell me everything that had to be done and went off and bought his, did his own little thing on his new job. Well, at least I got 15 minutes. In most cases, if somebody leaves, not by promotion, but just leaves, you lose all that knowledge. And they very rarely pass anything on. Matter of fact, when they leave, they also take maybe take all their customers with them as well. So this is one way to retain valuable employees. It make sure you keep your customer base. And also makes it you know everything more reliable for your for your business and for your company. Uh, keeps your customers happy. They don't like to have round robin. Uh, changes of, of, of uh, contact people at, at, at businesses. They like to have the same same person, they, the go-to person they can go to all the time. They don't want to learn new people, new nuances about how to do business with them. So it helps that helps your business with that part of it. Also, there's internal continuity that is built in this thing because the employees have to work together. And when you get a new guy in, on, in, on, the, you know, on the team or a new guy, gal on the team, uh, maybe you don't click as easily or don't understand some of the, the communication things that need to be done and that causes some problems as far as you know making sure everything just kind of runs smoothly. So the whole idea behind this is if you keep your employees in place and enhances productivity. Uh, also it's a tax deductible business expense to do this so uh, and the, uh, the plan can be designed and customized for each executive. So you can set this up to keep the most valuable people on board, the ones that aren't as valuable, the ones that maybe you don't even want to keep around you don't give them a program. So the idea behind this is that you can, as a business owner, design this program to make your business as, as effective as possible with the employees or the, you know, the human capital that you have uh, and working for you that day. Right? And the uh, administration cost of this is uh, pretty simple. They have to buy a stamp to write the check, send off the check. The insurance company takes care of all the administration. So basically, they don't have to hire a, you know, some special organization, some TPA. You know, TPA to come in and uh, take care of everything, no administration costs, cost them a stamp. So how does it work? Essentially, it, uh, a couple ways you can do this. Uh, the executive actually owns the policy. The company pays the premium. They can pay it directly to the insurance company, and the executive owns the policy, and that's one simple way to do it, or the company pays the premium to the executive, and the executive pays it to the insurance company. From an insurance agent point of view, 
you would probably want it to be the first way. And also, if you're the company, you would probably want to do it the first way, the top one, because the company wants to make sure the money's going to the insurance policy to retain the employee. Uh, you want to make sure the money's going to the insurance policy to an insurance company to make sure the policy stays in force. So this might be your more favorite way, but it works in either way, uh, you know, either way you want to do this. But that's as pretty simple as that. The company pays a premium, and uh, the insurance company gets the money. The executive has the policy. Simple as that going forward. So, so what's in it for the employee? All right? First of all, they get you know, family security. They get more insurance. It's part of the program. Insurance is included in the, in the whole deal. All right? They might get uh, more a feeling of appreciation if they're picked out and as one of the key executives that get these programs. So you know, that's accolades for them. Um, uh, also, it provides them with higher income. Out of the box, they have actually have higher income. You know, they they have more money. They end up getting more money ultimately out of this company for the things that they do, and they end end up with a supplemental you know, employee retirement program that basically uh, can cost the employee as little as zero to do this. And uh, essentially, the way that works is this: is that when the company provides a bonus to somebody, the bonus is a taxable event. Uh, as, as taxable income to the employee. So to say the employee is in a 28% tax bracket and he gets his $10,000 bonus. Well, the employer gets a tax deduction and say the uh, and most corporate employers are in a 39% tax bracket. Okay, so they 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 pay they save 39% in taxes. Uh, basically, the employee has to get pay taxes on the 28 on, on 10,000, which is 28% of that. So basically, if they pay the premium, 10,000, the insurance company. The tax on that is $2,800. If they did a single bonus to the employee, what that means is that the uh, the company is going to bonus the employee $1,280 totally. That's what's going to be a 1099 for it. 10,000 goes to the insurance company. 2,800 to the employee, which this 2,800 is destined for Uncle Sam. And basically, after tax, it costs the uh, you know the employer $7,800 for this program. And because the uh, it was a single bonus. The employee does have to pay the tax on this program, and it costs them $1,000 in taxes. Okay, but then you can actually do a double bonus, which means that we're going to give the employee an, enough money to pay the taxes on both the um, premium as well as the tax on the bonus. So that and that way that works out is that the premium is $10,000, the tax is $3,800. Uh, so they they give the employee $13,889, and the employee it costs them nothing after tax and. And this little calculator I built, you know, basically, if I, we did uh, $30,000, you'll see how everything works out. It just does all the numbers, everything changes, but essentially it uh, does the calculations for you very simply. So again, at the end of the day, the employee can pay as little as nothing. You know, again, if, you know, the more they pay them, the more tax is re required. But if they bonus them, it ends up being nothing. So it just calculates it for them very simply. So the idea behind this is that it could cost the employee uh, zero after tax. And then basically, if it's you know, it's a, if the um, if the employee is a you know major owner of the corporation and he's bonusing himself, he probably doesn't want to pay the taxes anyway. So let the corporation pay it for him. So that's the, that's the idea behind this. So going forward, what it does for both of them, it promotes. Their partnership. Make sure that they're you know they're more of a team. Enhances productivity, promotes employee job satisfaction, and at the same time, it will provide what I call the best retirement program of the 21st century. And we're going to show you how that works. Okay, so that's how you find the money. So essentially, what we're trying to do here is explain that the corporation can pay for all this, get a tax deduction for doing it. Now, because that happened, there are some other ramifications in, 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 in there, and the employee is going to get some you know, tax, taxable events going to happen to them, but if it's done correctly, it, it will cost them nothing or little, basically. Little or nothing, just depending on how you set it up. So now we found the money. What are we going to do with the money? Okay. Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to purchase a max-funded index universal life policy. Simple as that. We're going to uh, purchase the least amount of coverage for the most amount of money. And uh, some of you who have sold uh, universal life in the past, and and, you're, uh, and some of you have this fond memory or not so fond memory of you know how those policies have all blown up a lot of them in the past. It's uh, and the reason for that is that the way those policies were sold is that when universal life first came out, the interest rates were 
you know, current interest rates were somewhere in the neighborhood of 10, 12 percent, depending on the policy that you were selling. And everybody was going out and showing 10, 12 percent is what what the what it was going to earn going forward. And based on the 10, 12 percent to buy, say, $100,000 of insurance, you only had to pay $200 a year. So whatever the lowest number. So they sold the most amount of insurance for the least amount of premium because they used the 10 to 12 percent uh, return that the policy was going to pay to make sure that it would all work. Well, unfortunately, uh, the 10 to 12 percent didn't didn't last very long, and then the nobody went back and told anybody. Oh, by the way, now that the interest rates have dropped down to 4 percent, you're going to have to put in a whole bunch more money to keep this policy in force. Yeah. So what happened? Uh, essentially, uh, uh, a lot of those policies got in trouble. People didn't put any more money into them. Nobody told them to put any more money into them. And at uh, the end of the day, everybody looks back at them and said, boy, those policies were terrible. And then really, they weren't so bad. It's just that the way they were sold, and the, and, the, and the concept here was that they sold the most amount of insurance for the least amount of money. What we're going to do is we're going to sell the least amount of insurance for the most amount of money. Completely opposite the way this works. And that makes sure that this is going to succeed. So here's an illustration, and I got this client who's age 45, preferred non-tobacco, and basically what he's going to do, he's going to pay $10,000 a year into this policy. And this is the bonus. He's going to get a bonus of $10,000. Well, he's actually going to get a bonus. Maybe he's going to get a bonus of $13,000 if he's in a 25% tax bracket. Whatever he's in, they're going to bonus him, at, and that's, that part of the whole equation is separate from this, okay? This policy basically says that we're going to get ten thousand dollars after tax to stick into the policy. Okay, and you know we got a ten thousand dollar premium, and the way I allocated the money in this in this contract was on a very conservative basis. But what I did was I put half the money in the index account, and I ran the index account at eight percent, and I put half the money in the fixed account, which is paying four percent, and the composite rate between the two of them ends up being like six percent projection. Initially, you're starting out with that's what we're projecting. So what happens is that you put the ten thousand dollars in for you know twenty two years for this forty five year old, and it says that at the end of that time period he can take forty five thousand a year out of the policy, almost forty six thousand income tax free when he retires, and he's got life insurance all along the way. Okay, so we start out with a minimum amount two hundred and four thousand dollars. It increases every year until we get out and we quit paying premiums, and we tell it to flatten out. We're not going to buy any more life insurance because we're not putting any more money in. We're taking the money out, and the, the policy starts going down in, in value because we're actually pre-taking the death benefit. Effectively, that's what's going on here is we're taking the death benefit in advance, and, the, and, and, and we're taking it out on a tax-free basis. And it continues on, and the couple of things that I would point out is that this policy, this male age 45 policy, also has some guarantees. Now, he could have taken that you know, $10,000, and he could have put it into a – SEP or IRA or 401k plan, or he could have put it in the stock market, or you know, so any place he could have done anything with it. But generally, wherever anywhere else he would put it, has it had no guarantees, very little guarantees on the return. Unless he stuck in an annuity, he'd have some guarantees. Well, this policy, he puts in two hundred twenty thousand dollars into the policy, and here we are at the end of age sixty-seven. There's actually two hundred twenty-one thousand dollars of guaranteed cash value in the policy, and this number is only here. And it only would be here if the stock market was to go downhill every year for the next 22 years. And this is the, still the number that he's guaranteed to get. It's a, like um, in this case here for a 45-year-old, it's the full return to premium at worst case of what he put into the policy. Now, if it went down, if the, if the market went downhill for the next 22 years, we'd have a lot of other problems to worry about besides this, you know the guarantees in this policy. But the bottom line is that there are guarantees in the product, right? And you know, if it does well, there's there's a lot more money in the product, and we only ran this at six percent, and there's like you know four hundred thousand dollars, so he's doubled his money in, in, in the surrender value. Now, we're not going to take the money out for, and, and cash it in, but he can if he needed it. He can he can go ahead and take the money out, but we're going to take it out on an annual basis. And if you notice, uh, you know, there's actually a death benefit at that point in time, like six hundred thousand dollars as well. Went from two hundred to six hundred thousand. He got closer to dying, and he got more insurance, which is probably a good thing, right? And you'll see it keeps on going all the way to age 100. We keep taking the money out. And, uh, and notice here at age 80, there was like $290,000 of death benefits still in the policy. So there's 290 at age 80. And there's also, uh, we started out at 204,000. And if we go all the way out to age 100, 
there's even you know there's more money out there's like seven hundred thousand dollars so what we're going to do is we're going to check and see if this is a good idea so we have this software this is provided to all of our Ogletree advisors that the software the, and one of the calculators in this tool book and there are about 14 calculators in there they can play with to do all types of insurance sales ideas and you know, help people understand how their problems are how they work and how we can help them but we're going to just talk about the, the last grade tax saver today so basically the last grade tax saver is this program and what we're going to do all well, this thing pops up here hopefully and so we're going to plug in the numbers, okay? And he's 45 years old, and he was going to put in $10,000 a year. He's going to do it for 22 years, actually. And in the 23rd year, he was going to take out $45,000. I'm going to just say $900, so some other number than that. He was able to do it for 33 years. We're just going to suppose he was in a 25% tax bracket. Today, we're going to leave him in a 25% tax bracket. Well, let's just make him a 30% later, okay? So a 25% now. So this basically says that, uh, and we ran the illustration at 6%. So we put in 10000 a year for 22 years, and we're going to be able to take out 45.9 for 33 years. Okay, And then if we go and look and see if this, well, that looks pretty good. Small numbers going in, big numbers coming out. But his opportunity is that he could take that money and probably put it in a qualified plan. Now, remember, he has to pay tax on this $10,000, so they have to bonus some extra money. If he was just to take it all and stick it in the qualified plan, you know, that would probably save him some headaches, maybe, he thinks. So let's just look and see how that would work. So if you plunk the, plunk the money into the qualified plan, I'm going to click on this thing. What this is going to do, this blue, is we're going to overlay the qualified plan contributions. And because he... Uh, has to pay the tax. We're going to put the whole amount, the thirteen thousand. He's put him in a twenty-five percent tax bracket now. We're going to put the whole thirteen thousand that he'd get from the employer, and put it in here. So we don't have to give that money to Uncle Sam in taxes. He's just going to take the thirteen thousand, put it in here, and essentially you'll see it's going in there. But the problem is that when he goes to take it out to get the forty-five nine out of his qualified plan, he's got to take sixty-five thousand because he's got to pay tax. Well, all this money above the above the yellow here, this blue that's above the yellow bar, because the yellow is the insurance policy, the blue is the 401k plan, all this money is money has to be taken out and given to Uncle Sam. This money, once it's gone, it doesn't even earn you taxable money. It earns you nothing. It's gone. And this is where the arbitrage really comes into play. Because we take this money out and we give it to Uncle Sam, take 65000 out of there, you know, we take our chair, give Uncle Sam the taxes, and the money's gone, it's not earning a penny. Whereas when we, even when we take the money out of here, the 45.9, we borrow it out, the 45.9 is still in there earning money. And at the end of the day, when you take those two things and put them together, this is why we have all this extra money here at the back end. Right? So the policy continues on, and the 401k plan just you know, quits in the 37th year, say, basically. So the idea behind this is that that's just one place he can put his money, and that doesn't look very good. Right? And actually, we got them running at 6.5%. I'm just going to bump this down to 6% because we only had 6% in, uh, in the books. Only had 6% in, uh, in the policy. And you'll see here that he runs out of money in the 80th, uh, when he turns 80 in the 35th year. So basically, this doesn't look very good. Then we go talk about uh, if you put it in a CD, well, that wouldn't do much good at all. They're paying about 1%. If you try an annuity, annuities are only paying about 5%. Uh, you don't get a deduction for putting it in. And at the end of the day, when you take it out, it's tax just like the 401k. Until you start taking out your own money, then you pay less tax because you're, you know, you're taking out your own basis. But it runs out of money because it's 5%. It's not doing very well. And that's probably a big number to say 5% on an annuity today. Uh, Tax-free bonds, well, you get no deduction for putting them in. They're only paying about 3.5%. And you know, and they're really not designed for taking money out on a daily basis like this, you know, I mean or a monthly or annual basis. They're really designed to buy and hold or just take the interest out. So if you start liquidating these things, an example, if the interest rates should happen to go up a percent at this year right here, the value of these bonds would drop by about twenty five percent instantly. So the, you have to hold them till the end in order for it to work. And uh, you know, if you start liquidating you have to get less and less to liquidate. So you'll see that the life insurance policy does much better than that. And then the last one is the Roth IRA. And this guy's 45. He can only put 5,500 in his Roth IRA, and 5,500 can't compete with 10,000. I don't care how you 
put that together. It's got to, you know, and plus it's, you know, getting about 5% and whatever, and it doesn't have the arbitrage, doesn't have any of the issues, uh, other good things that we have, no annual reset in many cases. So basically what we're looking at is uh, uh, not a very good opportunity, comparatively speaking. So we jump over here, and this is the summary. And basically what this does is it says, these are all the, your opportunities here. These are all the places you can put your money. And which one do you think is better? And if you look at it very easily, you can see that you know, this is the life insurance policy. You know, this is your uh, you know, Roth IRA. This is the uh, tax-free bonds. This is the annuity. This is the CD. And this is the 401k or qualified plan. And these numbers that, I'm say that you see on the screen, the 388, that's how much money more than you put in that you got out of take out of the out of the product. So this is your profit. This is the profit that you would get on any one of these individual places that you put your money. And you'll see that the profit here is a million three versus three eighty eight. That's a pretty big difference. Yeah. So the idea behind this is that uh, the cash flow alone. If you uh, the key point is that uh, if you live a long life, if you're going to live beyond age eighty. You're going to need this over here. Now, if you're going to die young, that could be a problem, you know. But at the same time, uh, there's also life insurance over here that pays off if you die young. So, and I'm going to show you how that works. But essentially, the whole idea behind this is that this policy or this 401k plan is going to run out at age 80 versus this one last age 100, and that's a big difference in it and what it would get you. So. And then this doesn't even talk about the life insurance. This is just the cash. And the cash is about four times as much. So let's just take a look at this and see. All right? Actually, it's three times as much. So initially, there was $204,000. And a death benefit. And then I said at age 80, as I recall, there was, a, I think it was 350000 Oops. Age 80, there was about 350,000. We'll just say 300,000. And this is the numbers you should be taking off the illustration. At age 100, this policy had about $700,000 in it. You got 30 in that top. I got, I'll fix it. All right. Okay. So what happens here is this is this basically is that he starts out with two hundred and four thousand dollars versus ten thousand dollars because if he gets run over by a car tomorrow, he's going to go take his ten thousand out of his four hundred one k plan as an example. Well, he's actually put in thirteen, but he still have to pay taxes even if he dies. So he ends up with ten versus the life insurance policy. He's got a two hundred four thousand dollar death benefit. That's uh, twenty times as much right off the bat. Okay, we get out to age eighty. At age 80, there's $300,000 in the, in the death benefit in the policy. At age 81, just suppose at age 80, this guy spent his last quarter, got run over by a car, was the perfect way to go, okay? Well, his family was still there. They're going to need money. Well, the policy is going to pay another $300,000 after the fact. So if you ran out of money any time here, there's always a death benefit. If he, if, he, if he lives over here, he's got no money in his 401k plan, and he's got all this money coming in over here. So basically, if, he, if it was at age 80, if everything was just perfect, you know, as far as running out of money and passing away at the same time, the insurance policy still gives him 77% more money than he got out of the 401k. And then if he happens to live to age 100, okay, basically what he's getting here is that, oops, and this has got to be 700,000. He gets five times as much money overall if he lives a long life. So this is why we call this living insurance, because if you live, it's going to take care of you. And if you die, it'll take care of you too. But generally speaking, it's really strength is the, is the living insurance, five times as much money. So this is what you're going to give this, uh, this employee by if he stays on board with us and let us pay his premium for him every year for the next 22 years, we're going to give him a lifetime income basically of uh, – you know, fifty thousand dollars a year on top of that, uh, and it'd be five times more than you can get anywhere else. Simple as that. So that's how that works. You know, that's how the, how the how the software works to show how this works for you. So, so going forward, I'm going to talk about who can be the best prospects for this thing. Well, the best prospects for these uh, executive bonus plans are basically 
the senior management and the owners in the companies. They are the very best prospects. And the reason for that is that, first of all, they're the decision makers. You know, this is, they're the ones who can make the decisions to buy this stuff, and they're buying it for themselves. So they're the best prospects to be talking to about this. Also, for many of them, if they're senior managers, they're older, retirement's not that far off, so they they got it in their mind that they need to do something about this. They're probably going to need more money you know, to get out the door. And uh, they need to make hay while the sun shines. Simple as that. They understand this. You know, these people that run these businesses who are the senior managers, you know, generally speaking, from a financial point of view, they mostly have their act together about understanding you know, that we need to do something today to make something work. Okay? Well, they can be the best prospects, but who can also be the worst prospects? And the reason why they can be the worst prospects is because they're the senior managers and owners in the companies, and they're older, and they have less time to build a retirement plan. So you need to have to give them something really compelling to get them to do this. And also, they may have health and insurability issues. And generally speaking, you talk to somebody in, in, in a business that uh, you know to do this, and you want to do this for them, and you want to do this for their key employees, and they find out that their key employees qualify because they're healthy, but they don't they don't feel like real happy about you know, not sharing that way, you know. They're going to look for some other way for them to take advantage of it, you know, and at, at, uh, at the price that the, the employees won't get it, you know. So the idea behind this is that you need to have a product that you can accommodate as many people as possible, okay. So going forward, we do have a solution for this, right. So this, this is an illustration, basically, of a, of a employee owner, whatever, executive, getting a $30,000 bonus. And technically what it is is that we're going to suppose he's in a 40% tax bracket. He's at the top of the heap. He could put 50 grand into a SEP, but we're going to let him, he's going to, instead of that, you know, he's going to include everybody if he does these things, those kind of things, but he can put 50 grand in there. So what we're going to do instead of that, he's going to pay the tax on the 50 grand, bonus himself the 50 grand, and then have 30,000 left over to go into the insurance policy. And if he's 60 years old, We've got a male age 60, all right, and he's standard non-tobacco. We're just going to, you know, ratchet it down somewhat, just get a standard rates. He ends up getting $374,000 of coverage to start with. This is the min-max thing. We're doing the same thing. Death benefit is going to increase until eight, year eight when we quit putting premiums in, and then we're going to level it out. So he puts in $30,000 for seven years, and then it computes based on this 6% guarantee that we ran the same time before, okay, projected 6% number, he could take 18000 a year out of this thing all the way to age 100. So, you know, that may say, well, yeah, 30000 for seven years and then 18000 for 33 years, that may sound fairly compelling, you know, might be a good, good thing to do. So uh, let's just take a look at that. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and also I want to mention the target premium on this is $15,000. So if you can sell this, you're going to make 15,000 bucks commissions approximately, right? Uh, now, the issue is, can you sell it? Now, when you look at these numbers, 30,000 going in and uh, 18,000 coming out, basically, that's what it is. If you look at that, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the last great tax saver again and see if this will work. So, and again, the, the biggest... Uh, place that we're going to be looking for this is going to be, uh, he's going to be competing with a, like a SEP or a 401k plan, something like that. And we're going to be, uh, make him 60 years old. And he's going to put it in for seven years. And income's going to start in year eight. All right. And he's going to get, I think it was $17,900 out of this thing for 33 years, All right? So, and uh, we're going to just say that he's going to be in a 40% in a tax bracket coming out. And, uh, you know, this guy's a big hitter in this company, and we're going to put him in a, look at this, you know, we've got these numbers going in, all these numbers coming out. Is that a good deal? I don't know. Let's just look at his other option is that if we put him in a 40% tax bracket, He's getting to put 50 grand into his plan, and if we get 6% over here, and we're going to do 6% up here, we're going to compare apples to apples. All right. When you look at this, all right, you'll see, you know, he puts in more money, 
he takes out a lot more money, but at the end of the day, it's not that big a deal, the difference, you know. This is he's got to get out to age, you know, you know, 99 before he runs out of money, you know. So is this a big compelling reason for him to give you his money? Yeah, probably not, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a better deal if all things work out. Plus, he gets life insurance. You know, if we look at the summary, though, you notice that it's the, the numbers are not that, you know, not that far apart. Right? And uh, essentially, uh, am I going to go ahead and invest all this money with you because you know, not for this great deal? So that, that's, that's, that's kind of an issue. You know? So they would have this to look at this thing. So what we're going to do, I, I don't think that you'll have much success selling this program if, you, if they actually really look at the numbers and see how this works. Now, it does get life insurance. There's a whole bunch of other stuff involved in this thing. But you know, they're generally not buying the life insurance. That's not what the reason why they're doing this thing. They're buying this thing. You know, to get the uh, you know get the most money, most bang for their buck, so to speak. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you the Ogletree program. So we got the same guy, male age sixty, all right, and basically he's uh, you know seventy five, twenty five. Everything's the same, and but we're going to get him the same thirty thousand dollars. But the way we run the illustration, we're going to get him twenty two thousand a year. And this is the Ogletree Financial Executive Bonus Plan. These are standard rates, okay. And the target is 15K, just like the other one, except we're going to run it this way. And uh, effectively, let me just back up. I'm going to go back into the last great tax saver. And we're just going to take a look at the same scenario that we just did, except that now we're going to take it with the Ogletree numbers, OK? So the Ogletree numbers look like this. He's uh, going to put in $30,000. And he's uh, 60 years old. And he's going to take out $22,000. And he's going to do this for seven years. And in the eighth year, he's going to take the money out. And he's going to be at 6%. Whoops. And, you know, see, this is the 30 in, 22 coming out now, okay? Now we're going to jump up here. We're going to put him in his 40% tax bracket, just as like he, he is. And uh, we're going to say he's in a 40% now. And now when we look at the numbers, you'll see that uh, there might be a little bit more compelling reasons for him to do this, okay? we got a lot more years here at the back end to help them with this thing. And now that we say, well, we're not only going to get you more money, we're also going to throw in all this additional life insurance benefit. So then we could come in here, we can say, OK, the life insurance benefit to start with is $375,000, OK? That's 12 times as much money, right? And then at age 80, he actually has, actually, he ran out of money at age 87. So at age 87, in this uh, program, 87, there was $137,000 of life insurance in this policy. Okay. And then at age 100, there was actually 482000 So, end of the day, on a cash flow basis, we can give him 60% more money. You know, if he dies sooner, he gets less. Out of, you know, he gets a little bit less in cash, but he gets more life insurance. So the whole idea is that we're going to give him 60% more money, one way or the other, because now we can count the life insurance. Okay, and he actually has an opportunity to get four times as much overall cash out of this program on a tax-free basis than he would before. And four times is a big number to most people. So. Get life insurance all along the way. You get four times as much money at the end of the day, okay? And basically, right off the bat, he's got 12 times as much money if something happens. So he has life insurance, cash, the best of all worlds, basically. And oh, oh by the way, this policy in most states has a long-term care benefit, so you know he can have um, you know long-term care coverage if he actually needed that, which could be a concern if he does actually get out here to uh, you know 87 or 88 or whatever else probably going to need that, so the policy can supply that as well. So that's 
why, uh, how you can actually sell this to somebody using these programs. So I'm going to click out of this. So that's the uh, executive bonus program with standard rates. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the same program, except now we're going to run this with a rapid builder. And we also have um, the rapid builder has this thing called waiver surrender charge rider. And when you add that waiver surrender charge rider to it, everybody gets standard rates if they're table three or less. So the numbers come out the same, except I, for the 375, I had to reduce the premium by 20 bucks so it wouldn't be a mech. So he's going to actually put in a little bit less premium, 20 bucks a year less premium. So he ends up with the same 20, 22,000 coming out. Uh, table three equals standard rates. And, uh, and the only difference here is the target for you guys would be $7,000. So if he's not healthy, you know, you have to share in that. But $7,000 beats a heck out of zero. And we can help you do that by running it the way we run these programs, right? So we can help you make an executive program for your clients that when compared to other plans, even with the same policy, makes yours look like it's raining extra money. Simple as that. Our program with 22000 in annual tax-free income is a 23% increase over the other programs that would show only 17000 So we can get them 23% more or get you to get them 23% more, and we'll show you how to do this using the same exact product that we just showed you. But we don't run this stuff the traditional way that everybody else does. If you call up any other FMO and say, I want to run a min-max, they'll give you the $17,000 even with the North American product. Right? They may change the interest rates and do some other things to give you some more money. But we can do that too if you really want to do that. But essentially, uh, no matter what interest rate we use, if we use the same interest rate as them, we're going to give them more. They'll have more money coming out of our program, comparatively speaking, right? which you can then share with your clients. Right? So this is the best retirement plan in the 21st century, and also you don't need a corporation to put this plan in force. The big deal about this thing is that you can go in and talk to somebody about this and as an executive to say, hey, this is a program that, that, that your corporation can provide for you, and if the corporation doesn't want to do it, for whatever reason, the executive could do it himself. And you can see, instead of him putting his money in his 401k plan or a SEP, he should put it over here and get three, four, five times as much money. So that's how the thing works, essentially. So what we do is that we have tax deferral, annual reset, tax-free income, and tax-free death benefit that comes out of these. And these are the big three things that happen. And the arbitrage opportunities built into these policies that I mentioned earlier, everybody that borrowed money on the North American product last year paid 4% for it, but they still earned 14%. Made 10% of the money they took out and spent, blew on a boat, whatever they went with it, it's gone, but they're still earning money on it. No other product does that except for these products. Right? So. Why is it the best program? Well, compared to other programs, there's no cost today to start their own program. Includes a permanent life insurance program immediately. We can tell them out of the box we're going to give you 25 to 40 percent or more income in retirement tax-free. The real numbers are more than two to 300 percent more, but if you tell them that, they won't believe you. But it's real simple to explain. You say, they say, what do you do? They say, well, you increase people's retirement income by 25 to 40 percent. Well, how do you do that? Well, we work with products that uh, have comparable rates as, as other market-like returns but we take all the taxes out, and if you're in a 25 to 40% tax bracket today, you're probably going to be in a similar one later, hopefully less, but you're going to be in a similar one, somewhere in that ballpark, and if we take that away, uh, immediately you get that much more income, and that's what we do. So there's zero down, downside risk, there's zero percent income tax on the income, zero percent income tax on the residual capital left over. You know, on, on a 401k plan, you die and you have money left in your 401k plan, Somebody still has to pay the tax. As a matter of fact, if you are, uh, you know, saved your money, had your money in your 401k plan, and left it to your doctor's son or daughter, who was in a higher tax bracket than you, you immediately just increase the taxes on that 401k plan from maybe a 30% to a 40% because they pay taxes on whoever takes the money, and if the, they take the money in their higher tax bracket, they pay higher taxes. Simple as that. So everyone can qualify with no limits on contributions. We showed you how we can get table threes to get standard. Uh, at the end of the day, on an individual basis, when you're talking to somebody, if you run into somebody who's got health issues and really can't qualify for this, well, there's they always, you know, if they have a spouse, they can own the policy, buy the policy on their spouse, they can control all the money, and uh, basically manage to get all the same tax deferral and, and tax-free income. It's just that they use the healthy person and their and their family to do it. Doesn't work real good with young kids, you know, but it works well with uh, adult children as well. You can do that, right? So.
works pretty good. There's no penalties. They can get the money out. You know, we have no idea what the future has to hold. And if something happens five years from now or ten from years from now and we need the money with these products, they can go get the money. They don't have to jump through hoops to get it. And uh, it's not just life insurance if you die. It's also living insurance in case you live. Simple as that. And that's what we're selling, living insurance. Keep that in mind, guys. No more and girls. This is not, you know, we're not talking about dying. We're talking about living. More people are going to be living longer than ever before, and they need this. So I'm going to turn this over to Doug and let him finish up here. All right. Hey, Louie, thanks a lot. Guys, you know, we're just trying to make it easy to sell life insurance. That's all we're doing. This software last year sold over $100 million of life insurance. Uh, each and every year it's, that we've used it, it's, it's done pretty close to that. that we're, we're taking just regular life insurance producers out there, and we're, and we're showing you how to make a, a true living using our tools. So give us a call. I mean, we can help you with these sales concepts. We're going to provide you with the top contracts available. We're not going to give you a haircut to do business with us, but all the sales materials, the software, the marketing videos that you see out there on our YouTube channel, um, they're available to you, no, no cost. All you have to do is come on board with us. Uh, every Tuesday, we've got a training webinar. I mentioned uh, uh, the, the one that we're having coming up. You'll definitely want to take time out to be there. Uh, illustrations, we can run them just like the ones you saw here. Uh, so, you know, come on board. Targeted marketing list. Uh, we want to invite you to our trip. It's going to be in Cancun next year. It only takes $50,000 to get there. With selling these types of cases, it, it doesn't take but a few. So, guys, thanks again for being on our call. And, Louie, great presentation. Um, Y'all, give us a holler. Thanks.